this mandate crushes silver price Wednesday. Get your money out. That's the sentiment hovering over downgraded banks as people panic, and this crisis has now made its way all the way to the top. The governor of California has engineered the greatest rug pull we could imagine. This mandate starts tomorrow, and in this video, I'm going to break this down and show a disruption like this knocks the wind out of the economy, and when this hits, you're going to see that silver, as a safe store of wealth, has been crushed. This is from KCRA.com, and the headline reads, Governor Newsom's mandate for state workers to return to the office gets mixed reaction. The article starts by saying, California Governor Gavin Newsom's announcement this week that state workers will no longer be able to work from home full-time in many cases is getting some mixed reactions. Starting June 17th, state workers will be required to work in the office at least two days a week under the mandate. And this is a quote from Assemblyman Josh Hoover. He says, it's really frustrating. He says, I have thousands of constituents that are currently teleworking people for the state of California. Their own state agency has praised telework, talked about how effective it is, how it's enhanced productivity. The governor had committed during the pandemic for this, but now appears to be walking back. Hoover is now calling for a formal audit of the governor's return to work mandate. Hoover continues by asking, how much are we spending on maintenance and building operations? What impact is this having on our environment? Just a few weeks ago, the mayor of Sacramento, Mayor Daryl Steinberg, said downtown Sacramento was set to lose billions of dollars over the next 20 years because the number of state workers who haven't come back to their offices. Now, the people that will be hit the hardest will be working families that are now forced to start working next week. They're forced to find child care. For many, that includes elder care and support for all the people living in their home. They're forced to commute. And look, I get it. The problem hitting California is twofold. Downtown San Francisco never fully recovered. In fact, it has been one of the last cities to recover from the pandemic where storefront after storefront had been left vacant. All the workers that left the city, they took their discretionary spending with them and that killed every brick and mortar. Now, the elephant in the room, though, is the commercial real estate issue. We saw six banks have their ratings downgraded last week, and that is directly tied to the issue of commercial real estate. You put these together, families forced to upend their lives, banks tightening lending standards because they're overwhelmed with commercial real estate debt, that is going to hit the economy of California in a big way. And whenever we see disruption like this, it hits the price of silver hard. And, and add to this, on Wednesday, we will see the release of a major economic indicator. U.S. retail sales data will be released, and that will show that all these major retailers like Target, Walmart, fast food restaurants like McDonald's, they are all struggling to get people in the door. These are the disruptions that impact the price of silver and the economic data we need to focus on to know when a massive change in price is headed our way. Those are three strong forces coming to hit the price of silver. And this is exactly why I diversify my investments. I want to thank Atha Energy Corp for sponsoring today's video. Their ticker is on the screen. It's S-A-S-K-F. They have the largest land package in the world's top jurisdiction, the Athabasca Basin. It's the largest. Let that sink in. They have the largest cash position of any small cap uranium stock by orders of magnitude. They're commencing upon the largest ever exploration program in the Athabasca Basin. Now, allow me to add this because you're going to love it. This basin is the equivalent of going to the Athabasca Basin in 1975. That's the scope. So how did this company with a market cap of only 137 million US and 42 million of it cash become the largest holder of land in the world's top uranium jurisdiction. It took the co-founders, check this out, it took the co-founders who were the company's biggest shareholders nearly a decade to stake the basin. To just stop for a second and think of the extreme level of entrepreneurship this requires to walk the surface of the basin and claim 4.8 million acres of land. I wanna put this into perspective for you. Do you already hold a uranium stock in your portfolio? If you do, call the company and ask how much actual cash they're spending in 2024 to explore for new uranium discoveries. Atha Energy is in a league of its own, and they're going to spend the following sums, the highest in the industry, $12 million Canadian on the Angelac project, $9 million Canadian on the Gemini project, $9 million on grassroots exploration in the Athabasca and Thelon basins. The previous owners of Angelac defined the resource in 2011, drilled it in 2012, increased the resource by nearly 100%, kept at it, increased it by another 50% by 2013, and then stopped. Wait, why? That's what you should be asking. Why? Why would the previous owners of the project stop with all this momentum and incredible results? The answer is Fukushima. Yes, Fukushima caused the previous owners to stop dead in their tracks because the industry came to a halt. 
it is trading for $0.69 cents Canadian with an analyst price target of $3 Canadian. Again, their U.S. ticker is S-A-S-K-F, where it trades for $0.50 cents U.S. This is exactly where I like to get in on a mining company. And to know that Troy Borstroli, the CEO of Atha Energy, is a geologist with expertise in projects like this, that tells me they have a CEO that knows how to get this done. Check out Atha Energy. Perform your own due diligence. Their ticker is on your screen, S-A-S-K-F. Check them out.